Welcome to another series in Unity Game Development. If you want to learn how to click and drag, then stick around. So there's quite the laundry list to get click and drag working in Unity. So to get mouse events to work correctly, the first thing you have to have is an event system in the hierarchy. You also have to have a ray caster on the camera and you have to have a collider on the object that you want to be clickable or draggable. We'll go through the steps and show you how to do all of these. We're going to make a project that can move a sprite around the screen by clicking and dragging it with the mouse. Here we have a simple 2D project set up. In the main camera, we want to add a raycaster. If you're using a 2D project, use the 2D raycaster. If you're using a 3D project, use the regular raycaster. We need an event system in our hierarchy right here. So this is under UI event system. And then we want to go ahead and add our 2D object. I'll use a square here. All right, so we have to add a collider to this. Those are the things required just to allow us to have mouse events. So we'll make a script. I will call it, I'll call it event script. This could be something we use for other objects. And before I forget, I will go ahead and attach it to the box for right now. All right, we'll go ahead and edit the script. So we need to use the library called event systems, just like that. There are several interfaces available. And I will put a couple up here. Here are a couple of the interfaces that we can implement. We'll go ahead and do click handler. And that happens when we click the button. We'll also make a drag handler. We have a begin drag handler. We have an end drag handler as well. And we can just go ahead and implement these methods. I'll have it stub them all out. All right, so we have these all stubbed out here. Just to prove that they're working, we'll go ahead and put a log message inside, let's say this one down here, just the pointer click. And we'll go ahead and run this one. And we can see this logging the messages just fine. Okay, now several things can go wrong. Um, if you are not getting these messages logged, here's where to look on the main camera. Make sure you have a physics raycaster. If you don't, here I'll disable it while it runs. And we can see, we don't see this counter moving up at all. So I'll put that back on. And now we see it. Make sure this is a 2D raycaster if you're in 2D and a regular one if you're in 3D. Make sure that you have event systems. Okay, if you don't have event systems, let me just, I'll delete this one while it's running. You can see there that I do not get the events, the mouse events. Um, another one, of course, is if you don't have, here, let me clear this out. If you don't have a collider on your object, you can see that we don't get the events here. I'll put that on. And of course, if your script is not attached. So those would be the places to look if you are not properly getting the events into your script. What we want to do next is make something that can let us drag. So the first thing I'll do just as a sanity check, I will put in some debug messages. Now this, uh, this will flood the screen, but that's okay for now. So while it's dragging, I will go ahead and display the position. So the 
position is passed in in this event data parameter right there. So we can click and drag it, but we won't see the square move at all. Okay, it's just processing the drag event here. So if I click this, we can see the screen get flooded with data. Okay, then move around here. Begin and end drag can be used if you need to do something, uh, maybe like change the color uh, while it's being dragged. And when you're done dragging, you can change the color again. Maybe we'll do that later. What we wanna do, we wanna update the position of the square while we drag. So we know we have some position data sent in here. So one would think we can just do a transform, right? And then let this position equal the position passed in. And we run this one. And I'm going to select the square here so we can see in the inspector the the transform values while this runs. So I will click and drag this and it makes it look like it just disappears. And I still have my finger down on the mouse, but if I bring it maybe way, whip, there we see, way over there. Okay, so you can see that it's generally moving. Here's up and down and here's right and left but my mouse is way down here in the left corner. So it's not quite matching up right. And this has to do with our view of the world here. When we look at our game running, uh, this, is the in this is the entire game here that we can see. And this is the camera view that's reflected in this rectangle right here. The coordinates of the camera are not the same as the coordinates of the world. We need to transform the square relative to the view of the camera. So unfortunately, this is not the way it's going to work. Okay. So we have something called the camera dot main dot screen to world point. Uh, it is this one right here. Okay. And what we can do is we can take the position here, okay, this event data dot position, pass it into screen to world view, and we can set the position based on that. Okay, so we'll run this. And let me drag this around. Now what's interesting, I'm dragging this around. You can see it in the top window in my scene view, but in my game view, it seems to be gone. Okay, so let me show you that again. So we can see it up here in the scene view okay, but in the game view, as soon as I click this, it seems to disappear. Now, I can tell you that the movement feels good. Here's the bottom left corner, top left, top right, bottom right, kind of right in the middle. That feels good. So how would we debug this? Well, I would look at this square right here and let me run this again. And let's look at the position. The starting position is zero, zero, zero. Okay. Now, when I move this, you'll see, whoops, let me drag that again. When I move this with a drag, you see those positions move around, right? So notice that the position went to negative 10 on the Z axis, right? So let me put these back. The game's running. Let me just put these all back at zero and we see it reappear, right? Now watch the Z axis. As soon as I move it, it jumps to negative 10, okay? Because it's grabbing the position of the camera, okay? So if we look at the camera, we see that the position is zero, zero, negative 10, okay? So in our code, what happened is it gets the X, Y position, okay? It grabs the position of the camera and it's sitting back 10 units. And it's essentially putting the, the square 
right alongside the camera where it cannot see it. And if we could just keep that thing at zero, then we would be okay. But as soon as I move it, it's using that camera translation. Okay, so the camera translation is good except for the Z axis. So what we would want to do is add an offset right here so we can always keep it at zero. Okay, so we're gonna make a variable called, how about camera offset, how about that? And what we can do is just set it one time. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, let's go ahead and get the camera's coordinates, all right? and. I'm gonna get the camera's coordinates relative to the center of the screen. So I'm just gonna say zero, zero, zero. We'll do this, we'll say offset. Okay, oops, sorry, it's camera offset. Now if I were to print this, let's see what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and print what the camera offset is. So I'll clear out this console right here. We'll run this. And we can see the camera offset right down here is negative 18.6, negative five and zero. Now those aren't the real coordinates. Those are the translated coordinates to the center of my game view. So what we wanna do is really be concerned with this 10 right here. So now that we have that, what we can do is set camera offset X to be zero, right? We don't wanna touch the X and we don't wanna to touch the Y because those are perfect. We wanna put an offset in the Z axis. So all we have to do is just negate this, right? Just pretty much get rid of the Z. So we will add this vector, right, with X, Y, and Z to our transformed position right here. So we'll get this once, we'll set it, and all we have to do is this, we can easily add a vector, camera offset, just like this. So let's see how this works out for us. I'll select this square, X, Y, and Z. We can see this here. And now I can move this around correctly. We can see that that Z position is always at zero, right? So it just subtracts out that offset every time I move it, right? And it is responsive, right? I can still, let's see, I still have my click handler in it. You still see that, right? Incrementing up there. And now we can drag this wherever we want. All right, so I made the square kind of a yellowish color. And what we're gonna do is we are going to make this thing change colors. We're gonna make the square change colors while we drag it. So we would need to get a hook to this sprite render right there. So we'll make a variable. In the start, we will go ahead and get a hook to it. And we'll do this. We'll say sprite render dot color equals. I'm going to do a random color. It'll just keep changing colors while we drag it. Okay. So we can see that it changed colors when we start to drag it. Right, so that's on begin drag. So let's do this. Let's make it change colors while we drag it. 
So we can see that it changes colors while we drag it. And then maybe when we're done dragging it, we want it to go back to a different color. So what we can do is this, we'll say, we'll go ahead and save the original color in the startup. And then we're, when we're done dragging, we will restore the original color. Just like that. Okay, so we're starting out with our color to be yellow. And while I'm at it, let me get rid of these debug messages on drag. All right, so it's changing colors while I move it. And when I let go, back to yellow. Back to yellow. Okay, and we could do anything we want. We can, we can make the size bigger, we can make it smaller, we could rotate it, whatever we want. Any, any property we want to change, we can do that in any component programmatically. And we could make this a prefab. And we can add lots of squares in here. So these are prefabs since they're all blue. And what I'll do, I will space them out a little bit just so it's a little easier to grab each one of them when we start. And there we have it. So we can run this. All right, and we can see that and we can make any sort of game we want with these things now. Now we can detect clicks and drags on these objects. If you found this video interesting or helpful, consider subscribing. We'll see you next time.